So, Jason here, and I have been currently sorting out my computer. Whenever I finish a big project, I wipe the machine, start from scratch. It's pretty easy when everything is mostly cloud-based these days. Um, but I was doing that, and I suddenly stopped and thought, rather than automate everything back to normal, it's probably a good teachable moment to stop and explain why I set things up the way I do. So. Let's go through it and have a look at the way my computer is currently configured. So as for apps, um, I mostly develop in Unity and I use Writer for my editor, so they are predominantly front and center. I also make good use of Windows multiple desktops. So you'll see here, this is where I would normally be working in Unity, but I also have my Writer on a different desktop, which we'll get to in a minute. And then I have my project management slash organization stuff on another tab. In this case, I'm using a combination of Obsidian and Amazing Marvin. We won't get into that now. There's, that's a whole other conversation to have. First, let's look at my folder structure. So my PC, again, very minimal. I just have my normal C drive and then a storage drive. Storage drive is mostly used to contain whatever TV shows or movies I'm watching, as well as any inbox for downloaded files, things to process and organize. And then what you're seeing here, whatever video capture I'm currently doing, it's much easier to store there. And then, as well as that, on our quick access, it's basically just the standard documents, downloads, whatever. And I try to keep those clean. I try to keep, I empty them out daily. That way there's not too much stuff uh, that kind of piles up and, and makes the computer messy. Now, the important one is documents. So in documents, I hide every folder that I'm not using. So normally most apps, and this actually goes for the, the PC menu as well. So you'll notice here, Windows is very limited here, and then into the project directory, it's just the apps that I actually care about, use, or install. Anyway, so back on track, let's go to the documents directory. And this is all I have. I have Overwatch, because I play far too much Overwatch. I have my Unity projects, and then I have something called the Vault, which is just the place that this Obsidian layout is stored. Again, not super important right now, just something to note. So. Two projects, this one Unity Projects folder, that's where I store everything. And we're going to make a new project now and have a look at the way I approach it. So, Unity Hub, new project, and we will put that into our Unity Projects directory. And I will call it u dot um, new project example. Now, first thing to note, u dot. Why do I use u dot as a prefix? Well, while Unity creates this for us, we can have a look at why I do that. One of the icons in my taskbar here is something called everything. Quite nice to have. And what this does is it is an indexer for your operating system. And this lets you find everything. Now, right now it's going a bit crazy because it's literally creating all of these folders for that new project, as you can see. But the main thing to note about it is I can find anything on my computer. So if I go to uh, switch to everything and I type in star.cs, this shows me every C sharp file on my computer. And if I was looking for that, uh, a screen fader that I was working on, I'm sure, there we go, screen fader, it's in that project under that directory. Um, this makes it very easy to find things, as well as directories too. So now, if I go back to search and I go to folder, if I type u dot, I can pretty clearly see every single Unity project on my machine. And that's the main reason I use the u dot prefix, because unlike solutions in .NET or other applications that tend to have their own application file. There's nothing that really identifies a Unity project as a Unity project except the folder structure. And there's no kind of nice way to search by that. But if I use u dot as a prefix, I know for certain that that is in fact a Unity folder and it's very easy for me to find and reference. So we have Unity open now. And first thing I like to do is delete everything. I don't even want that default scene. Get rid of it. Uh, yeah, we're not even going to save this one. We're just going to have a blank nothing. So we have no assets in our project. Now, the way I normally start a new project is I go through the structure of creating the folders that I use in every project. In my case, this is a new folder called underscore project because the underscore will put it at the top. So as I install new assets, they are placed below mine rather than it kind of hiding my own scripts in the middle of everything. And then at the start of a project, I tend to stick with the standard by type definition. So scripts and art 
So I normally start this way, and then later on, as the project gets bigger, I switch to a uh, feature-based structure. But if the project's small, you might as well start with the simplest thing that works, and this works. Now, that being said, I don't like having to write that out every time. There is a default set of things I do in every project that I don't really want to have to copy in myself. So now we're back to a completely empty Unity project. So we don't want to have to put those folders in every time ourselves. If we're going to use them in pretty much every project, it would be nice to automate that process a little. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a really quick editor tool to help ourselves. So if we create a new folder called editor, and inside of here, we create a new script. And actually, before we do that, let me point out something real quick. So if I go up to my project settings, so this is important to set. And what this will do is it'll kind of group every script that you make for this project under the same name. Now, I've talked before about why this is valuable. Let's just take my word for it for now. Just set it to something like your name. Now, if I go to create a script, what it's going to do is it's going to use a template. So I will start by saying tools menu. Now, this script is going to look a certain way. And if I bring up writer, this is probably not what your default template looks like because I've customized mine. So let's have a look at how I did that and why I did that. So if I go over to my, uh, let's see, template, replacing the new model behavior template. So in this directory here, there is a text file. Now there's one for each template that is the default that Unity will create for you. So script dash something, new timeline, new behavior, etc. In this case, the one I use the most, new behavior script. And the default template has the start, the update, and a bunch of comments and other stuff I don't really care about. So what I do instead is I create my own. It's an awake and a empty section with a namespace wrapped around it. And if we look at what it gave me, that's what it gave me. So. In this case, that's actually not what we want, but the, the point is that it, it did follow that template. So we're going to get rid of the awake. We're going to get rid of the mono behavior. We're going to make this static and we're going to give it one static function. And we're going to call it um, create default folders. Now, in Unity, there is a menu item that you can put on top of a function that will make it show up in the editor. So in our case, we're going to want tools um, set up maybe, and then we will say create default folders. Now, if I save that and head back over here, you might notice up here, there's now a new tools menu with a new setup function with a new create default folders. So we've got ourselves a way to write code that will run effectively for the editor. Let's have a look at what our options are here. We can get rid of that using statement we're not using. And to begin with, we basically want to make a directory. So we have to first of all get the directory we're currently in. I can log the application data path. And I hit our menu item. You'll see it drops us in the assets directory which is perfect because that's where we want to be. We want to start putting scripts or folders to start with inside of this directory. Um, directory, create directory, and then you choose the path to create the directory. In our case, we want to start here. So the best way to do that is path.combine. And we're going to combine the application data path with whatever our new directory is. In our case, we'll start simple and we'll make our project folder. Clear that log. And last but not least, that won't actually show up initially because it's not going to reset the asset database until you refresh the asset database. Just have an editor folder. But if I click tools, set up, create default folders, there we go. We now have our underscore project. First of all, what we'll do is we'll get rid of all of these static functions. So we're using path, application, directory, asset database. That's a lot of static functions all in one place that kind of muddies up the code. So what you can actually do is you can, using a static version of something, you can directly reference it. So if we reference, uh, where is system directory? System.io.directory. 
And if you notice, by using it static up here, it grays it out down here. So what I can do is remove it from here. I can now do the same thing with the others. Create directory, combine the data path with project and refresh. Pretty straightforward. Now, um, I want to create a number of directories, not just the one. So we're going to encapsulate this function. So we're going to say create directories. And I like to have a uh, root directory. And then from the root, I like to pass in a collection of directories that we want to make from there. So, and this needs to be static. We're going to be referencing it in a static context. So now what we can do is take our path that we've got here and we'll combine it effectively. So I will say, this will be our um, full path. And that's going to be, if we combine the data path with the root and then for each in the directory list, um, new directory, we can say create directory and we will combine our full path with our new directory. And yeah, that seems fine to me. So now we can start to create a couple of directories. So let's create, you know what? In this small context, I think, yeah, let's simplify it further. I, I can I can read it from here. If it was, it was a longer method, I would change it, but this works fine. So in the project directory, we want to create um, scripts. We want to create art and we want to create uh, scenes. Tools, setup, default folders. We have underscore project, art, scenes, and scripts. Cool. We now have a helper function that lets us create whatever the default folder setup we want is. The only problem is this currently lives in this project, which kind of defeats the point. We kind of want this to live in a way that we can access across any project we want. That's not too hard to do. So first let's re-delete them and let's head over to our, our editor folder here. And the first thing I'm going to do is give this section of code some sort of name. And we do that with an assembly definition. So let's head on over to assembly definition and we're going to call this json story.tools. And now we have this folder and what we're going to do is we're going to make a package out of it. So let's pop back over to our directory structure here and we've got unity projects. If we make another folder and we call it unity packages, we can then make a package that contains this stuff in it, in this case, tools, new folder, tools. And then we need to give this package a kind of definition. And the way you do that is with a package.json file. That's pretty small. Don't worry, it's not too crazy. So if we do package.json, and we can open this up in VS Code. I have a small snippet here. And as you can see, it's really straightforward. It's just a name, a version, and a display name. This is what will show up in the package manager when we try to access this package. So now we have a folder with a package.json that we can put code into. So the way we do that is we can head back over to Unity and we can have a look at our directory here. And if we go in and just pick that whole chunk of code here. So we have our assembly definition, the meta files, and the directory. And if we cut that, when we head back over to our tools folder, we can now paste that in here. We now have an empty project again, and we've lost our tools menu because there is nothing in this project. Now, if we want to bring all of that stuff in, we can go to Windows Package Manager and then add package from disk, and we can click on, so just to show you where it is, documents, Unity packages, tools, and just double click this package JSON. And what Unity will do is it'll bring it in. Now you can add your description, you can add your details, you can even add sample projects in here too. Um, that's really cool, but we'll, we'll get to that later. All that really matters is we now have a custom package that brings that code in. And so just by including this, our tools menu is back. And so even though we have no code in our project, it's a completely empty project, we can say, hey, let's click tools, setup, create default folders, and there we go. 
we now have a way on a brand new project to configure it whatever way we like. And what's cool is if you look under packages, you can actually see all the packages that is installed in your machine, or at least for this project. And then under the one you just made is the editor folder. And we can go in and edit this. We found that useful. That basically outlines how I share code between multiple projects and how I use Unity packages relative to multiple different clients. The other thing worth noting there is I briefly touched on Marvin and Obsidian and some of the other tools I use. If you want me to do a deep dive in the way I use them, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you found that helpful, feel free to like and subscribe. And you can also catch updates on what I'm currently working on on my Ko-fi page, which is linked in the description. Have a good one.